The school board meeting of Tuesday, February 11th is called to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item is adjustments to the agenda. Are there any? The next item is the approval of the January 14th school board minutes. I have a correction. Under item um, 8D, the sub policy subcommittee, um, the dates are wrong. The subcommittee met on December 12th. And then the following meeting would be held Thursday, January 16th. Great. Are there any other corrections? Seeing none, the minutes stand approved. There is also a set of minutes for January 28th. Are there any corrections? And the minutes stand approved. The next item on the agenda is the comments by the high school and middle school reps. Let's do high school reps first. <laughs> okay. Uh Nordic ski team did well. Uh, we had a few students place high in the rankings in the meet. Um, both basketball teams, the girls and boys, are out of the tournament. But I'm happy to say we almost got in. But we, lost, we didn't get in by three points on the heel point standings. Um, swim teams, as featured in the Press Herald, are moving on. And so good luck to them. We just got our report cards last Wednesday, which could be good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the start of the second semester. Um, Valentine's, on, Valentine's Day is on Friday. So some of the classes are trying to raise money by selling heart-shaped lollipops and flowers. Uh, students are anxiously awaiting vacation. In theater, students are busy with the brief debut of Tildy. And we're looking forward to seeing that. And the speech team competed well in the recent states meet. Uh, I guess Matt wants to talk now. Um, <clears throat> also, for the few athletes that qualified, um, the indoor state, the indoor track states will be held Saturday at Bates College, um, and they had a pretty good season as well. The Student Council has also been focusing on the issue of communication between the school board, as I brought up last month. Um, and we feel it would be beneficial for everyone if the school board could experience what it's like to live alongside a student of Cape Elizabeth High School for a day. So we decided the best way to deal with this was to invite you to spend a school day with us. So on behalf of the Student Council, I cordially invite all of you to accompany a student of Cape Elizabeth High School for one day. We've gotten the okay from Mr. DeFusco, and we'd like to set a date for sometime in March. So we'll... Mr. Pretend to come too? Yes, Thank they better. <laughs> Thank all. you. That is a great offer. I know Ann Chapman has done that before. I, was it last year or the year before? I think it was last year, but I didn't get to actually follow one individual student. So that would be great, but do you have students who are willing to do that? Yes, we do. Really? <laughs> well, thank you for the invitation, and we will get back to you to do that. Thanks. Any other questions for the high school reps and middle school reps? Um, there was a dance last Friday, and it went pretty well. And our old DJ, Chuck Brady, he was pretty happy with the results. And we're going to have a fifth and sixth grade social February 25th. We're going to do it at Happy Wheels, and parent chaperones are needed. And the eighth grade just had foreign language assessment and placement tests a little while ago, about last week. And indoor track has just started, and our first meet will be February 28th. 
that's about it. Thank you. Are there any questions for the middle school? No? Thank you. The next item on the agenda is communications, and we are expecting Jane Amaro to come tonight. And Jean, were you going to speak at all in the budget picture? She's going to speak. Great. Why don't you go ahead while we wait for Jane to come? Thank you. As we're preparing for our budget, we wanted to get a little update from the state on things that are going on and that we might be concerned with. Go ahead, Jean, and then we can bring Jane in. Great. Come. Thanks very much for inviting me here tonight. Um, as you may or may not know, I've been asked to serve on the Appropriations Committee in Augusta this year, so every day I hear about the state of the finances in the state, and good, my friend Senator Amaro is here, perfect timing. <laughs> um, what the governor's proposal is, is that there's a 1% increase in fiscal year 98 and 2% in fiscal year 99, and that applies to not only our general purpose aid like we get here in Cape Elizabeth, but to the University of Maine system, the Technical Colleges, and the Maine Maritime Academy. Um, <laughs> The one two percent plan would give us um, it would cost sixty one million over the previous state um, biennial budget. Um, the GPA to education is about a five hundred million um, in addition, and the revenue comes from sales income tax and corporate income tax. Um, the governor's proposal retains the funding for learning results. It retains the funding for the main educational assessment test. It does not retain the funding for the magnet school in Limestone, um, and it does not uh, continue the funding for the medical school program, which was the program where we bought slots for students in um, medical schools in Vermont. And because we do, we're one of the few states that doesn't have a medical school, and if people came and served an underutilized area, they could work off their loans that way, and we found that was a very effective way. And there is a person, Rosemary Reed's niece from Cape Elizabeth, who was affected by this. So um, we're working on that. Uh, the, as far as the elimination of the magnet school, um, the governor just really is uncomfortable with that. Now, what's happened um, within appropriations is that I would guess that probably about 10 or 11 of the members of appropriations are in favor of the magnet school funding. So uh, my sense is that will probably um, still happen. There's also talk of a 3 and 5% increase for education, 3% the first year, 5% the second year. So um, I'll have to get back with you as the drama unfolds up in Augusta and let you know what's happening. But I'm happy to take any questions. Or S Scott could give you maybe a little information on what the difference would be if if the budget went from the 1% to the 3% or to the 5%, yeah. what our there impact would be. Yeah. I, there were two printouts from the state that came when, out. Did you, you come to the mic? mic? Just thanks. And say who you are, Scott. Okay. <laughs> I'm Scott Poole, the school business manager. Um, there were two printouts that came from the state, one at 1% and one at 5%. At the 1%, as you know, we lose about $203,000 um, in the effect to our state subsidy. At the 5%, we come within $20,000 of what we received last year. So obviously the benefit of us, to us is at 5%. So you can pretty much you know, extrapolate what the effect is between the other percentages. Great, thanks. And any time anytime income in COLA is figured into the formula, we lose. Yeah, we lose a lot. Um, the the um, point that I would emphasize is that, of course, I'll continue to fight for equitable funding. Unfortunately, it seems to me that the schools that do the best job get penalized the most. I think our town council and our school board work very hard together to cut things right to the bone. And um, we worked hard. We funded our own school. And we seem to just continue to be punished for being good. But um, we'll, we'll work hard. And if any of you have any ideas as to something that we could be doing differently, we, we certainly would appreciate your support or any guidance you may have to offer. There is a bill, uh, and I'm not sure who the sponsor is, that would reward districts financially if their fourth grade MEA scores are high. That would be nice for us. <laughs> that, that so would if, be. Do you know what the status of that is? Or the process? Um, I haven't heard of that, so I, I don't think it's probably been heard yet, but um, I'm sure that there'll be plenty of <laughs> chatter on that, and all the districts that had good fourth grade MEA scores will be supporting it. Um, one of the, the issues with the technical system is um, that they would have to have about a 13 percent reduction in student accessibility were this one two percent budget of the king of governor kings to go through and um speaker mitchell is supporting a bill um that's 1.8 million increase into technical colleges so we have all different kinds of ideas floating back and forth 
um, for funding of our, all different kinds, all different levels of schools. So. Any other questions for Jean? Isn't enrollment at the technical schools up? It is at an all-time high, that's mm -hmm. correct. It seems ironic to be cutting the area where we really need um, yeah, they were going to, ha they'd have to cut 12 programs and turn away 630 students next year with a 1, 2 percent. And about 85 percent of the children who graduate from there have an immediate job placement in their fields. So it does seem kind of ironic that that's an area we're thinking of cutting. It's ironic that, that this state places high in the number of graduates from high school, but we place in the lower bottom of children of students that go on to post-secondary education. And Number I think 49. Our funding, and I think our funding. <laughs> I, I think the funding has a lot to do with it, and that was something that we talked a lot about with this medical school situation, is for um, people to see the future is very difficult when, you know, we're number 49 in the amount of children that go on to um, higher education, and then if a child who maybe grows up in an underprivileged situation can see their way clear to college, but then the medical school on top of that, at, at Tufts it's now $40,000 a year for a student to attend medical school. So that's um, really quite a commitment. So I, I really feel strongly we need to help support those people in making that decision. Oh, Scott? We're discussing this. One of the other issues that came up um, that I understand is some additional money is going into the funding. Um, you know, they've talked about the 1% and the 5%. And there was just some discussion amongst superintendents and business managers of where that would be the most effective. And uh, what we found is that if that money is put into general purpose aid as opposed into capital improvements where Cape Elizabeth has already assumed locally um, the renovation of two schools and all, has already paid out an immense amount in capital improvements, that money going into capital improvements would not help us. No. But if it went into general purpose aid, that's where we'd like to see it. Great. Okay. Another um, area of concern for me is that there's conversation that w we may not be um, paying the teachers' benefits anymore from Augusta. They may have to come out of the district, which for a um, low receivership district like ours would be really a, a terrible thing to have happen. So I'm keeping my eye right on that bill and, and seeing what's happened. I, my sense is that it, it doesn't. Again, <laughs> there's 50% who really like it and 50% who don't, um, just like all school funding issues. Um, so, but we'll, we'll keep our eye on that one. Great. Anne wrote a letter in response oh, to that, did. and yes, which I, kept us all and, very informed. And, and since the governor hasn't responded to my letter, <laughs> I would just plead with you and Senator Anne yeah. Rowe to keep, keep the fire burning. <laughs> yeah, we're doing our best, <laughs> that's for sure. What's, what's the cost for the magnet school? Um, 1.2 million. Feeling one way or the other about the continuation of that? We have a, we have a student, I believe, that's attending from Cape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to, to me, um, first of all, the governor's part one budget had a $3 million um, surplus in it. So to not fund the magnet school was a real indication from his office as to um, his feelings about it. He has some feelings of elitism, and um, that seems to be his biggest stumbling block with that. Um, personally, I really feel that we need to support our best and our brightest. And I've had, they, we had five and a half hours of testimony just from children who attend there and their parents. And to hear um, about some of the underserved areas, I had a, in the mail a couple days ago a letter from a father in New Portland, which is um, kind of near Sugarloaf, it's way up. And um, it was a straight A report card from the magnet school that his son had gotten. And he was saying that in public school, there just was nothing for him. And here he was taking Chinese and physics and advanced chemistry and all kinds of things. And he'd been accepted early decision to MIT, which is an opportunity he never would have had coming um, from the SAD where he previously attended school. So it's an enormous opportunity for um, many children in this state. And, and I just would really hate not to have that opportunity for those few students who would choose to access it. It's just. Um, something we need, I, I think, to support those math and science students because I think technology is going to be our future. When you consider the isolation of where that campus is, it's a commitment to those kids. It's a super I, commitment. Yeah. It's interesting because, um, as most of you know, I attended high school in Cape Elizabeth, but I did a postgraduate year at a fine arts boarding school, similar concept to the Magnus School, which was in the top of Michigan. And at the time, I never thought anything of it. It wasn't until just the other day that I started drawing um, a lot of conclusions about the similarities of the experience. And um, 
It never occurred to me that that was any problem at all, that I was at the top of Michigan. It took me the whole day to get there from here. I took four flights to get there. Um, but, and we went to school six days a week, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And um, personally, my own um, SAT scores and things like that just zoomed right through the ceiling after a year there. It was just that opportunity to really work hard. And that was what we did. We went to school you know, nine and 10 hours a day, and then we rehearsed all night. And um, it was a, a fabulous experience for me. It just really changed my whole life. So knowing that personally it really makes me um, appreciate the dedication of those children at Limestone because it's darn hard work up there. Thank you, Jean. Sure. And Senator Emmer, if you want to come up, I know you have some proclamations for some athletic teams, and then you can fill in anything else on the budget picture. You could disagree with Jean. If yeah. You know. oh. <laughs> Never. Never. Oh, she she did a super job. Uh, I'll save the prop proclamations for last because that's the best. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for my voice. I've been talking too much today. And I'm on the tail end of a cold, so I've got a little bit of laryngitis. Uh, but to add what, to what Jean and Scott have already said about uh, general purpose aid to education, I feel really strongly as we advocate for more money for general purpose aid for education. And I, I think it, it, it is not a partisan thing this year. Both Republicans and Democrats are all advocating for more money for general purpose aid for education, more than what the governor has put in. Uh, we think that the governor was a little stingy in dealing with education uh, in this budget cycle. Uh, and so the legislators are recommending a much more generous package for education than, than, than he did. But I think it's really important as we look at putting more money into general purpose aid to education that we do what's been done for years for communities that were going to lose funding. There's always been a cushion for school districts that have been losing. Uh, and it's something that this community only benefited from as the uh, school funding formula changed two years ago. So I'm going to be advocating that some of that additional money that we put into general purpose aid for education go into providing a cushion so that no school district will lose more than a certain percentage of the funding that they had last year. So I think that's something that Jeannie and I can um, work very closely on, and we have some other communities uh, that are very interested uh, in that same thing. And I think it's only fair, it's what's been always been done in the past, and uh, that we have a good case to make. Uh, so that's one important issue. Another bill that uh, actually that I, I uh, am uh, sponsoring and something that Ann brought uh, to my attention uh, over the years, and Rosemary Reed as well from the council, uh, is that we are sponsoring a bill which will require that a school district's experience rating in their health insurance uh, uh, experience be given to that school district, not just to the policyholder, uh, which is the main education association. Because we think it's only fair that uh, school districts know what their experience is and what their costs are uh, for health insurance. So that if you want to look around uh, and you want to be able to uh, uh, have a true competitive bid that it, at least you know what your experience is so that you can be in that market and compete uh, uh, with other companies who might be able to offer you a good package. So we're, we're putting forward legislation to do that and we'll be calling upon you uh, to come up and testify if you're interested uh, when that does go to, uh, uh, to public hearing. Uh, and in addition to uh, the Magnet School in Limestone, the discussion that you've had, last year we tried to also establish a Magnet School in the Portland area for the visual and performing arts. It, it was always the plan that there would be two Magnet Schools in the state of Maine. Well, the second, uh, be, because Limestone went first and the facilities were there and that was the easy one to do, uh, that got passed first. The, the school, the Visual and Performing Arts School in Portland fell upon political bad times. And even though it passed both the Senate and the House, it never did get funded. So we're coming back this year with a new approach, which we think will be less costly, uh, and which we think might benefit more children in the long run. And it will be a regional uh, school 
for the Visual and Performing Arts, which will be similar to the Regional School for Vocational Education, and that students can take all of their core subjects at their home school, uh, but would be offered opportunities in ballet and in uh, instruments and in theater, et cetera, uh, at a regional school, which might even be uh, the Regional Vocational School, which is now called the School for the Arts, or uh, I've forgotten what it's called, but it's a perfect fit. Uh, so we're looking to have Portland be a pilot project for this kind of a new school, and something that could be easily replicated across the state, and which we think would have a very low cost to it. So those are some of the highlights of what's coming up in education in the legislature this session. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Jane. Are there questions? Good luck with all of the bills. The health care is certainly very close to things yes. we've been working on. Yeah, I think it is to most school districts. Yeah. So Great. we hope we'll have some success. Thank you. You are. You have some yes. information. Yes. All right. Uh, we're a little late in doing this, <laughs> uh, but we didn't uh, think the fact that uh, Cape Elizabeth had two soccer teams who became state champions this year should go unnoticed by the state legislature. Uh, so the uh, entire uh, elected body from Cape Elizabeth, which includes Jean, uh, Peter Chinkat and myself, uh, put forward two uh, proposals before the legislature for their consideration. And I don't know if there are representatives here from the two teams tonight, are there? Okay, could we have representatives from the girls team come up first? This one is kind of a little bit close to my heart, so I have to tell you a little bit of the history. Uh, back when my daughter was in the seventh grade, this was a long time ago, 13 or 14 years ago, and Rolly Moore was coaching in the middle school. Uh, having had two older brothers who played soccer, my daughter said, I really want to play soccer. And I said, well, you know, you can, you can go and ask the coach, but there was no girls team at the time. So uh, my daughter, being the daughter of a politician, decided she better get a few other people to go with her uh, in order to make an impression. So she got some of her friends to join her. And uh, Raleigh said, well, you know, there are enough girls that uh, you could be part of the boys' team. And what they did that year in seventh grade was that the girls would all be sent in as a unit about three quarters of a way of the way uh, into the soccer game, uh, and they'd get to play for a few minutes, and then they'd all come out, and the boys would continue on. Well, the girls felt that that really wasn't good enough, so by the time eighth grade came along, there were enough girls who got together, put a petition together, and came before the Cape Elizabeth School Board, and in the great wisdom that this board always has, they decided that it was time for girls' soccer, and look at how far we've come. It's really a, a great deal of pleasure tonight to present to the <coughs> girls' soccer team this resolution from the legislature. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing the members of the Cape Elizabeth High School girls soccer team, winners of the 1996 Class A State Soccer Championship. We extend our congratulations and best wishes. And be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the legislature and the people of the state of Maine, given this 23rd day of January, 1996. 97 at the state capitol, Augusta, Maine. Congratulations. Thank you. Girls, could you go ahead and introduce yourself just so we know? <laughs> Mandy Johnson. Jamin Mooney. Great, thanks for coming. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Super. <laughs> and Senator Amaro and I. Um, had the fortunate experience of working with these girls last fall um, as part of a civics project. They did a little work on campaigns for us, so we know what dynamite individuals they are. It's my pleasure now to invite the boys' representatives up because not only did Cape Elizabeth have girl state champions, but we had boys' state champions. 
And I played on a state championship team, although regretfully not soccer, um, when I was at Cape Elizabeth. As I mentioned earlier, when I went away to school in Michigan, I did get to play soccer. So um, I was disappointed we didn't have a girls' soccer team. But having served on a um, state championship team, I do know the dedication and hard work that was involved um, for you gentlemen. And I want to thank you on behalf of the people at Cape Elizabeth. You brought a lot of pride to our community. And I know you worked very hard, so I thank you. So be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing the members of the Cape Elizabeth High School Boys Soccer Team, winners of the 1996 Class A State Soccer Championship. This is the Capers' fourth state title in five years. We extend our congratulations and best wishes. And be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the legislature and the people of the state of Maine given this 23rd day of January, 1997. Congratulations. And if, if you could just introduce yourselves also. Ben Tinsman. Mike Wagaman. Jeff Haywood. Great. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And before we leave, I also want to congratulate the coaches. Uh, I think it was really exciting that Charlie Carroll, a graduate of Cape Elizabeth High School, uh, came back this year to coach the girls' team to victory, and that Andy Strout has been given uh, the recognition that he certainly deserves of being recognized as an all-New England soccer coach of the year. And we owe you something from the legislature, so we'll be back with a sentiment that we're doing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Great. We have, I know, at least one more communication from George. Are there, go ahead, George. Uh, this is just a, a reminder that there is an organizational meeting uh, for those individuals who are interested in serving on a school climate task force. That's going to be happening this Thursday, which is uh, February 13th at 7 p.m. at the Pond Cove Media Center. And if anyone has any questions about that, uh, they can give me a call. Great. Thank you, George, for taking that on. Um, Gail has a communication. I have received a letter from Lauren Gabriel, the uh, junior from Cape Elizabeth High School, who has studied for a semester in Australia. And I distributed that this evening. She has uh, written to the board to express what a wonderful experience she's had. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. And nothing at this point in time. And the next item is the principal's report. And we are with the middle school first tonight. Thank you, Nancy. I don't suppose nothing to report will suffice, will it? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank all of you and all of the parents who came to the January 28th workshop. Um, the evening was interesting for us. We heard lots of things for us to think about and to begin to act upon. And we applaud George's organizational meeting that's coming on Thursday that he's already announced. I know Mr. Jewett and I both plan to be there, um, but we also understand it's an organizational meeting for parents um, to meet. Also in response to some of those same issues, um, not with the entire middle school yet, but beginning to deal with our oldest class in the building, tomorrow um, Phil and I will be meeting with representatives from each eighth grade advisory group. And we've asked the groups to select their representative in whatever manner is appropriate for their advisory group. And we're going to meet with them and begin to collect information from the students, too, about some of their feelings, um, perceptions about their class, perceptions about being in the middle school. And we hope that it will be the first of several meetings. And perhaps at some point down the road, George, our two groups can get together. Um, and begin to have a voice. And what we'd really like to work towards in the middle school is to begin to empower the students who for some reason have felt that they haven't been empowered to uh, begin to take things in a different direction. And certainly give them all the support we can from all the professionals, um, any member of our staff that we possibly can. We are working with several issues as we continue with that climate issue. And um, we just want to briefly announce we have had um, a serious issue that we're working on with our eighth grade boys basketball team. And we are dealing with that and handling um, the situation, I feel, appropriately in dealing with consequences for that. 
as Caitlin reported to you, our last dance, which was on Friday night, went well, and everyone seemed to have a great time. So we look forward to continuing those. Our, as she said, the fifth and sixth grade students will be going to Happy Wheels, which is always an exciting event. We do need parent chaperones. You do not have to be an excellent skater to go, um, just to come and go, and the students do have a really good time. I will tell you, though, that they do try to entice the adults out onto the um, skating arena floor, so that any chaperone should know that. Um, let's see, in academics, we have three weeks left to this trimester, so um, this is a time that many of our students get quite energetic about their um, tasks. Our seventh and eighth grade students will be finishing up their science projects. It actually goes into the next um, trimester. They are due in mid-March, but uh, prior to February break, um, in fact, I think they were due today. Um, the last iSearch group has gone through, and this has been a group. Each one of our eighth grade social studies classes has done this, some of them doing it the first trimester, some of them the first part of the second trimester, and the last group being Mrs. Michaud's uh, social studies groups are finishing it up now. And this is a project based with coming from the research group and the research committee, working with their suggestions, and also working with the high school to coordinate what the eighth grade iSearch experience would be, and then connecting it to the ninth grade iSearch experience and having one grow from the other. So um, those have been interesting, and many of the students have found them um, quite challenging to do. Um, let's see, I think as I look down here, the only other thing just um, to warn people, but it, we don't mean this as a threat at all, our indoor track team is off and running, and they run in our hallways. So if you happen to be coming to the middle school for an afternoon meeting, uh, please just look down the hall carefully. This is not a thundering herd that's approaching you. It really is an organized team sport, but they do run in the hallways. They're very good about it, but we do just need to step aside and let them go through, um, and they don't mean to run over or intend to run over anyone. So I think that's about it, if you have any questions. Great. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, Jordan. I, Nancy, I just have a comment. Um, the, the meeting on Thursday is really going to be more of an organizational meeting. There will be some open sessions, which we would be delighted to have students, parents, t teachers, mm -hmm. uh, everyone involved in. Um, the, as I said, Thursday night is really kind of laying out the strategy, but there will be certainly an opportunity for students mm -hmm. to get involved, and we welcome their involvement. Great, and that's pretty much what we've told the staff at this point, too, George, from our last meeting, that this was just an organizational meeting, so I don't think a lot of them are planning to attend Thursday night. In fact, we haven't encouraged that, but that there would be meetings down the road where we'd want to all get together and work together on those issues. I know the one other thing I forgot to mention is we do have a play coming up on April it's either 9th or 10th, or both of those dates, right around that time. And our practices are underway. And um, if you have a chance to save those dates, um, this will be fun. They're doing a review of Broadway songs and really working on it. it. It will truly be a middle school production. I don't want to falsely sell this. You will not think you're in off-Broadway, but we will be doing a middle school production, and we invite any of you to that. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Nancy. And I also want to thank your staff for all the work they did preparing the materials for us for the January 28th meeting. Uh, next one is high school. Rick. Good evening. Um, I have a number of nice things to say about more of our students at the high school uh, over this past month. Before I do that, I would like, uh, with the opportunity tonight, uh, to be on camera to clear up some issues around the eligibility policy, which is now in effect. There have been a lot of, uh, I received a uh, notice today about rumors about what's going on. and. Um, what I would like to say is that the uh, school board and the administration attempted to bring together uh, athletic uh, policies in line with co-curricular activities concerning eligibility academically uh, to participate. In that realm, um, we are, are bound by state regulations who control our sports teams, to, and we as a local board can determine a number of courses that a, uh, a student must pass to be eligible above and beyond four but it is the state who determines how we determine that passing, and that is done by the quarter, not by the semester, not by the end of the school year. Well, when the policy was put together, again, the intent to be equal for both co-curricular students and, and, and athletes, uh, the policy was written to say students passing their subject would be eligible. Uh, thus, we have currently students who are on speech and debate and theater who may have failed a course in the second quarter, 
but are participating because the policy does not clearly define by the quarter, while our athletes are, again, being uh, uh, outlined or, or, or gu the guidelines for that are determined by the state, which says by the quarter. So we have a number of athletes who are ineligible this quarter, uh, the third quarter until the end of the ranking period, uh, and we will follow through with that. I have come, I have been asked by the board, as you know, to, to come up with some guide, policy guidelines which I will present to the policy subcommittee tomorrow to more clearly define where we need to be with that. But our intent, I want the, the audience watching to know that the intent was to equate uh, uh, athletics with co-curricular activities and that will be our intent to continue that. Uh, some good news, first of all, the uh, state swim meets will again be this weekend. On Saturday, our girls who uh, ended up in third in the uh, Southwestern meet will be uh, uh, participating at Husson College, and our boys swim team will be at Bowdoin, and they rank second in the Southwesterns. And also the uh, track state championships for both boys and girls will be at Orono this Saturday. One thing I'm very, very excited about as principal is this year we're planning to host a special Olympics event at Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, we are doing it in conjunction with um, our student service project, and the first weekend in May, I'm meeting tomorrow with uh, uh, Marilyn Mihalik and members of the um, Special Olympics Committee, and we will have between two and 300 Special Olympians from Greater Portland and Cumberland County competing here at Cape Elizabeth. Our students and faculty will be involved in, in volunteering their time to support these kids as they compete. We have a number of students from Cape Elizabeth who are always traveling elsewhere, and they'll have an opportunity to shine in their own community with their parents here and all of their friends and supporters. And I'm, I hope that this becomes an annual or at least uh, over the next few years something that, that Cape Elizabeth will take on as a, as a positive uh, piece. And Skip Crosby, who's our uh, coordinator for the uh, Student Service Project, will be working with me on that. Again, it'll be that first weekend in May. We're looking to hopefully have it that first Saturday and hopefully the weather will be great. And uh, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to many of our students uh, participating and, and also our faculty. It's ironic, as I may have mentioned before, they not only need people to keep time and, and uh, minutes and everything else, but they need huggers. So when these kids come through the line, they have someone to give them a hug and say congratulations. I volunteered for one of those, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Also, tomorrow night, um, we will be, oh, actually Thursday night, we'll be having our second parent assistance team meeting, and this is a, a meeting of parents and students from the various classes, and we meet to talk about issues around the high school. The, the groups divide up into their particular classes with their issues. Uh, the topic for Thursday night, ironically, is talking about high school, the climate in the high school, and so from 5.30 to 7, we'll do that, and then we'll join you, George, and uh, continue on. But it is an opportunity, again, for parents and students to voice their issues and concerns. At that meeting, I would also present our parent uh, input form for them to, to preview and, and give recommendations to, and also uh, discuss, again, the eligibility issue um, with, with parents who may have other questions. Um, and uh, again, this is something new this year that we're trying, and I, I, we have had between 29 and 30 parents involved in that committee. And I hope, that, m mentioning tonight on TV, if other parents wish to join us, again, that'll be at 5.30 in room 205 at the high school on Thursday evening. Uh, open House for 8th Grade Parents will be on March 6th at 7 o'clock. And again, this is an opportunity where we invite all the 8th Grade Parents to come down and meet with our department heads, guidance staff, uh, social worker, administration, and have a chance to uh, talk about what, what plans are there for the high school. And, and, and study guides will be mailed out to parents prior to that, and it will give you an opportunity to, to get a, a, a quick overview of what the high school is all about and begin to think about registering your sons and daughters for next year, and also to ask questions uh, of the guidance counselors that you may have about scheduling and issues around the high school. So that will be again uh, on March 6th. Now about the students. we've had. Uh, qualifiers in our speech uh, for the Nationals of the CFLs or the uh, Catholic Forensics League, they will be going to Baltimore to, co to compete, and that's Memorial Day weekend. Uh, our winners in the, uh, again, Rachel Allen in uh, speech qualifiers, it, Rachel Allen, Emmy Austin, Amy, excuse me, Emmy Austin, Ilana Berman, Jer Colucci, Alex Ortolani, Chris Falk, Emily Hennessy, James Kittrich, Vince Faraday, and Devin McFarlane. Those, those students will be going down to Maryland. And in debate, qualifiers for the Nationals again in Baltimore. In Lincoln Doug Douglas will be Julia Lopez, first alternate Rachel White. And in policy debate, qualifiers were Maria Maynard and Jean Preddy. 
And again, first alternates, Amy Pallon and, and Angela Tizon. Second alternates, Rachel Potter and Emily Toulouse. And third alternates, Ashley Earnshaw and Erica Hecking. We, we did very, very well in the competitions which were held this, this previous weekend. I also would like to congratulate Jennifer Braff and Zach Hornby. They are national semifinalists in the United States Presidential Scholars Program. They are two out of 500 students chosen nationally, and it's through uh, letters and, and, and writings and also transcripts that they qualify. They will be uh, de determining the, the winner uh, in the forthcoming month, and I will let you know how these students have fared. Um, and I'm really, really excited about that. Lastly, uh, last month I had the opportunity to, to recognize a colleague who was retiring, uh, Paul Jackson. Tonight I have this, another uh, honor and privilege to recognize someone who I've worked closely with, and I want to read from this so I don't forget, miss anything I want to say about him. Uh, and that's Mr. Randy Ray. Mr. Ray's dedication to education, uh, to education has been a tremendous asset to Cape Elizabeth High School, both as a teacher and an administrator for 27 years. He and I have worked closely as a team, and I cannot thank him enough for his support and co-leadership over the last four years. His concern and sincerity for students at Cape Elizabeth High School have been a strength which has unequivocally brought, he has brought to the high school. He has spent countless hours working with students, parents, and teachers in support of a positive, accommodating environment for all involved. His allegiance to the students and staff will always be remembered as one of his strongest attributes. From the hundreds of students and staff who are fortunate to have worked with you, Randy, and from an administrator who could not have done it without you this far, I want to thank you very much for your time and efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Randy, for all of your time. 27 years. We will miss working with you. Oh, I'd like yeah. to add something. Um, I first met Mr. Ray when my son had him in a civics class in middle school. And as part of that program, the students were asked to come to town council or a school board meeting. And Mr. Ray was right there with them, taking, helping them take notes, and they'd report back and to class, you know. And the parents were to pick up the students at a designated time. Well, I had car trouble that night and didn't have a cellular phone at that time or, and didn't know how I was going to get there and was stuck in Portland. And when I finally arrived, Mr. Ray was standing outside with my son. No one else was here, and he stood by. And I just want to say again what Rick has said, that your concern and commitment to the students from that moment on, for me, has always held, and working with you on the Positive Action Committee, I, I feel it there also. So thank you very much. And I've only been here a short period of time, but it certainly has been my pleasure to work with Randy. He's been very helpful, informative, cooperative, and even on some of those wild and woolly days, he always somehow seems to uh, maintain his equilibrium. So it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Anne? Well, Randy's not only my, my neighbor, but I've had the, uh, the pleasure of working with him on some of those positive action committees. This is a committee that gets together when there's a kid who's, you know, struggling a little bit, um, you know, gets the family together and, and other people in the school, and, and there's always a board member there. And um, while you never want to see a kid who's struggling, I must say, you know, Randy's the one who's in charge of pulling those committees together. And on, at every single um, meeting that I've been at, his obvious sincerity and caring about each of these kids is so obvious. And I don't think that's always the case after somebody's been, been working with kids for, for 27 years. It's, you know, it's not everybody who, who feels that same um, depth of concern um, and, and that's so obvious. And I think the families appreciate it and I think the kids know it. Thank you, Randy. Next, um, Pond Cove. That's been two months in a row. Rick's been a very tough act to follow. <laughs> we'll put I, you I, first next time. <laughs> right. But um, I've only worked with Randy for a year and a half, and I'm going to miss him too. So um, I just wanted to update you on the science work that's going on because of the steering committee. The uh, Pond Cove has wound up hosting two full day workshops to further work on the uh, examining and analyzing our curriculum and instruction against the main um, math and science framework. 
Um, we had about 20 teachers attend both uh, full day sessions and there's a, a plan to have a follow up meeting in May to bring the lessons back together. And in the meantime, I think it's been unanimous, an unanimous decision of the group that we have to do something to revise, update, or buy curriculum material. So the uh, steering committee met again today and they have two threads going on now, the instructional piece plus serious investigations with uh, publishers and suppliers and the learning center to, so that we can see some of the curriculum that's happening in other schools in this area, in Maine and perhaps around the country. Uh, once again, I really want to thank Ingrid Stressinger, who represents Pond Cove on this ad hoc committee, uh, Cynthia Curry and Steve Price from the middle school, and Kerry Curtis. Uh, they're really doing a great job. Last month, too, I gave Anne a copy of the framework, and she not only took it, but she read it. So I'll, I'll pass this one down, and you can check with Anne to see if it's really worth reading or not. I think it's a good document. <laughs> For the second month in a row, the team leaders couldn't get to the team leader meeting in Waterville because of snow. So we, we had already arranged subs for team leaders and we had our meeting at uh, Pond Cove and I talked to the um, facilitator at Waterville so we could stay on track. We have drafted uh, a job description which is very similar to what you've seen already I think in the contract. We sifted through all the faculty views and opinions and advice about the team leader position. Um, but now that we have done this, I think we actually know what it means to be a team leader. The, the central tension in the job is between being a, a, a grade level rep and representing school wide interests. And I'd have to say because of the structure of the job, uh, team leaders do come from grades, it's very heavily weighted toward grade level representation. So that we don't make school wide decisions, but at least we have a forum and a council to bring them up. and probably from now on defer them to the full faculty. So it's helped us, helped us quite a bit. It's also helped uh, clarify communication in the building and people's understanding and acceptance of the uh, levels of decision making at Pond Cove. We have recently decided after great discussion to reorganize the fourth grade set up a little bit. Instead of uh, having departmentalized teams, we're gonna go back to a more, I guess we call it self-contained format with each of next year's eight, that's eight teachers being responsible uh, for the core subjects of the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, and then we'll encourage sharing for, uh, of skills and resources in science and social studies. Uh, this arose for two reasons. Uh, and I, I think it's more responsive to fourth graders' needs uh, because they're young, and we were losing time just in transitions back and forth, even in the small halls at Pond Cove. Um, the next concern is to make sure that everybody is prepared to take this on uh, next year, all eight of them. But we started talking about that today and uh, I, I, we can definitely do it. Um, PCPA news, I want to thank uh, Connie Goldman, you remember Connie. Connie and uh, my wife, Jill Rosenblum, who works for the Maine Math and Science Alliance, came to a PCPA meeting last week and talked about standards, assessment, and learning results and the curriculum framework. Um, the parents who came, 25 or 30, also had a chance to take a quick look at the parent survey that's going to go out in June and uh, give me verbal feedback and write their comments all over it. And I want to thank them for being guinea pigs for us. Um, PCPA President Dev Vallely and the other um, parent association presidents are going to help organize a Maine Ambassadors for Education program in mid-March. And I'll give you more details on that after vacation. That's about it. Any questions? Great. Anne? I have one question, one comment. Um, the science curriculum issues, is there any chance we might actually have some curriculum materials in place for next year? Or is that People really hope so. Um, and that would mean redirecting some of the resources we have now. But it, we'd like to get core curriculum topics together and then uh, find out if teachers need um, more training or more material to make it a go for next year. So within a year, if all goes well, we should have a curriculum. That would, that would be I, I'm on tape. I'm saying this, right? Yes, you are. That's why I asked you tonight. Right. And, and I just want to applaud you for taking a look at the fourth grade situation in terms of self-contained classrooms as opposed to teaming in terms of the needs of the kids of, the, of, of that age. I think that's a, that's a good step. I, I think the team came to the conclusion. I've been in and out of their meetings, and it was just time. We still have half a year to, to, to make sure we're prepared. So, But I'll get that word back to them. appreciate it. 
Great, great news about the fourth grade. Great. A good, good move. Thank okay. you, Tom. Uh, the next item is committee reports. We have um, slimmed the number of committee reports. It seemed like in the past meetings we went on forever with all the committees we're serving on. So we are um, having fewer committee reports tonight, but as things of interest come up, we will have board members um, let Cynthia know so she can put them on the agenda. Um, but otherwise, we'll still be informed through minutes and those kind of things. But the first committee is the Finance Subcommittee. Charlie? The Finance Subcommittee met this evening at 6.30 in the Town Hall Conference Room. We signed the warrants. We reviewed the appropriations. At this point, we're about 58% expended and in good shape fiscally. Uh, we reviewed the school lunch income statement. Um, reviewed the, uh, we received a letter stating that we will get an $8,756 refund refund from the Maine School Management Association unemployment <coughs> refund. Uh, we re reviewed an athletic stipend request. Uh, we met with our <coughs> new special ed director, Claire Labrie. Um, she shared her systemic entry review and evaluation of our special education program and some of the issues. Um, we reviewed a letter from the Maine Commissioner of Human Services supporting our contracting with Maine State Billing for Medicaid for services provided to our school system. Reviewed a memo from the high school yearbook advertising and sales editor. And finally reviewed outstanding items on a building, on the building project. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, next committee is the policy subcommittee. Gail? Our last meeting was January 16th, and at that time we approved for second readings the foreign exchange student policy and the interrupted study policy and the electronic communication system access. The electronic commu communications policy was approved at a special session on January 28th, and that is, uh, has been in effect since that time. We will be voting on the other two policies in, in a little bit. I'd like to um, have people note that the policy committee, if you have the notes from the policy subcommittee, the date of the next meeting ha um, is different from the yellow sheet. It's correct on the agenda. It is tomorrow morning, Wednesday, um, at 745. And at that time, we will be finishing up or continuing on our discussion with the middle school handbook or materials that had been put together for the meeting on the 28th and to begin discussion on student-to-student -student harassment policies, which um, has been a suggestion from the MSMA that we um, work on having those policies put in our book. Great. Thank you, Gail. Uh, pool study committee. Yes, that's me. I know. <laughs> um, and I think this might be my last time um, reporting on the pool because we had um, a proposal, a joint meeting of the pool study met, um, I'm forgetting the date, with the chairs of both town council and a school board to discuss where we were going to go. And at that point, it was recommended by the pool study, the 22nd, thank you, um, that we put a proposal before town council which was brought before town council last night, and I have a copy of that for the board, the school principals and for the board. Um, it was approved last night that the town would fund $38,500 for the smoke and fire detectors, the PVC conduit, the emergency lighting, the fire alarms in the pool and lockers, um, and testing of the pool deck which will happen this spring as soon as possible with minimal impact on use of the pool for this school year. But town council funds will be funding that. It was also approved last night that there would be the establishment of a seven member commit building committee, a uh, member of town council, school board, community services, advisory commission, and four citizens um, for reviewing the options for the pool and to have Harriman Brothers continue on giving us a more detailed plan up to a $50,000 expenditure, which is also town funds, and the intent being that at the end of the pool project, whatever that might be, 
it will become a municipal pool and no longer under the uh, school board budget. That was not formally voted on, but as Mr. McGovern has said, since they have now appro approved $88,000 towards this pool study, that um, that is the intent. So I have these from Mr. McGovern this evening. And uh, in the courier, there will be um, more information and any citizen who would like to serve on that board of the building committee for the pool, uh, there'll be information on how one would go about becoming a member of that. Any questions? Do you have any more copies? Oh, yes. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Gail. Um, and thank you for chairing that pool study committee and doing, doing all that work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We'll have to find another school board member to take over as the standing committee member. I might be the community member. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Uh, the next um, committee is the superintendent search committee. Anne. Once the dust settled and the deadline passed for applications, um, we were down to about 25 um, people who completed the applications. I think that's about right, about 25? Uh, maybe closer to 30. Closer to 30? Okay. And uh, the, the school board met last Thursday to go through all the applications and choose the semifinalists. We chose nine promising semifinalist candidates. Um, we're in the process of contacting them right now to come for interviews. <coughs> between February 25th and March 7th. And again, just to refresh people's memory about who will be interviewing them, um, all school board members will be present at those interviews. Uh, the principals from each of the schools um, are on the committee. Uh, the community members will be Kevin Sweeney and Mary Gale. And the teacher representatives are Sharon Merrill and Deb Twombly. So that, that is the group that will sit down um, and interview the, the semifinalists. Um, after that's, that's over, the school board will get together again to choose the finalists, and uh, we will update everybody at the March meeting. Thank you, Ann. Uh, the next item on the agenda is unfinished business, and we have policy readings. Oh. <laughs> the first policy uh, I'm putting before tonight is a first reading um, because, even though you've seen it before, it was decided that we would rework it and, more truthfully, Anne would rework it, and making the policy, the official policy, very brief and the guidelines quite extensive. Um, so this is a first reading of the copyright compliance file EGAD. I just want to add that. <laughs> the caveat that I wish somebody else would go through the original of that policy and kind of read it against the administrative guideline to make sure that I didn't change the meaning of any of the wording in there. It was a very arduous policy to go through <laughs> and try to turn it into English. Guidelines, yes. The guidelines. Um, so I, I would appreciate it if, if maybe Gail, because she's the okay. policy chair. Okay could take that on because um, I may have inadvertently changed um, the meaning of some, some of the sentences. I hope not. But. Well, I thank you. I think you did a great job. Oh, thanks. Yes, thank you, Ann. It's a huge job. It's a huge <laughs> job, great. The, uh, for second readings, IGBI, which is the Foreign Exchange Student Program, and this uh, it is in particular for students coming to our school and was taken from the procedure guidelines that the high school has been using, um, firming up some of the requirements and making them in compliance or in accordance with some of the um, immigration advice that we have received. So I move we accept. No, we I, don't have to. It's a first reading. No, this is a second reading. Okay. Okay, that one. This is, is a second. second reading. Well, I'll do the two together. And the, the other one that goes with that is the interrupted study, which is a new policy that uh, we have worked with um, guidance people regarding our students becoming exchange students in another country. This is filed G, not necessarily another country, another experience, JFAB. Do I need to read these? No, I, um, no you don't, definitely do not have to read them. I was just curious about the word introduction at the top of IGBI. 
I don't really think we need it. Um, just take that out and yeah, I just, otherwise just start. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we do most of them. Did, did these come right from the high school? Sharon helped me up. Then I assume when we get them into our policy books, they'll be in the format that we use for most of our policies. I mean, we're not going to have all these. I didn't have an opportunity to type cap. them into the format. I, yeah, no, no, I know you didn't because I knew it came from, from the high school and there's no need to do it mm -hmm. at this level, but I assume mm -hmm. they will be right. So, Assuming the, if it passes second reading, we can do that. Right. Well, the intent. Right. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, that's fine. So I move we accept IGBI and JFAB. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you, Gail. And the next item on the agenda is the nomination of 7th and 8th grade swimming coach. Thank you. Uh, I wish to nominate Ben Raymond as the swimming coach for grades 7 and 8. As you will recall from the last board meeting, we tabled that pending the number of sign-ups to see if that could be handled as one activity as opposed to two. And in, in talking with Andy, he tells me, based on the number of students, that Ben can do that as a joint activity with the boys and girls together. Thank you. Is there a motion? George? I make the uh, motion that we accept the uh, superintendent's nomination for Ben Raymond as uh, seven an eighth grade swimming coach. Is there a second? second Charlie, any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. The next item on the agenda is new business. And Cynthia, do you want to present? Right. You have in your packet on a bright blue sheet a request for a baseball spring trip. And based on conversations we've had with other trips, uh, we do know that you want also the list of parents who will be going as chaperones. They do not have that list as yet, but we do realize that prior to the trip that we do need to have the list of, uh, of parents who will be going. Um, Keith isn't here. I don't know whether Andy can answer any questions for you. I, had a, has any. I just had a question of the number of players and then the numbers of coaching staff so we can figure out the numbers of how many parents we need to balance out the... Okay, Rick. Maybe. They're great. I think his until last year he took between, I think, 18 players, and there were three coaches, the varsity coach, JV, and assistant. This year he has 16 down. Yeah, okay. um, we'll and then there were also last year, I believe, three parents went down. That has not been a problem as far as chaperones. Okay. And so just to give you a little background on the location that they're staying, uh, Eagle Hill School, um, I know the headmaster is a close friend of mine, and we've worked that out real well. They were real pleased with the way our students handled themselves last year. They left the place in, in, in tremendous, uh, you know, after things were cleaned up and, and really helped set them out because they were on their break at that point and it, and, and it really uh, was beneficial to both sides. And they actu actually called us and said, are you interested in coming back because we have no problem with that. So they initiated the call and had no, no, no problem with that. So uh, we, w we can get specific lists, but I know last year there were three parents who went down as well as the coaches. So there was, you know, with the, the eight, uh, 16 kids will have a, Great ratio of coaches to players. And how are the 16 chosen? They will be as they go through the tryout process. They will be the var probably the varsity. Those kids will be on the varsity team. And and who and who the average cost is $75. How is that? The, the players that? pick. Yeah, the players pick that up. And that's that's brought up that and they they use their boosters group if they need to to uh, to help out with that. So there's no 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 cost to, no cost to the school for that. And if the okay, players okay. cannot, it's not doesn't prohibit kids from going. Okay. Okay. If that's an issue. Yep. But as long as we could have the names of the parents prior. I will do that. Yep. See that you have that. Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you, ladies, for asking my question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've asked those questions. We've learned, right? We've learned. We have the answer. Thank you. The equity of funding. Um, I need a motion to approve this trip. Do you need a motion? Does it need? Well, I just asked Cynthia. I think I it does. It does because they will be using insurance. our insurance. Yeah. Well, then I move we accept the proposed 1997 baseball spring trip as presented to us. Is there a second? I second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Next item is the 
Notification of a teacher returning from unpaid leave. Yes, we have been notified that Martin Costello, who is a teacher at the high school, will be returning uh, effective with the start of school in the fall. That does not take action. And the next one, go ahead, Cynthia. We also have been notified that Paige Brown, who has been on sabbatical this year, will also be returning to full-time status in the fall. The, uh, the one thing, Cynthia, that's yes. just a clarification. She hasn't been on sabbatical. She's our Fulbright exchange teacher. Maybe the I think Mr. Earl, Mr. Earl is our sabbatical teacher. I think he notified you last month, maybe? He has submitted something as well. He did, he did yeah. last month. Yeah. And the next one, Cynthia, go ahead. Yes, we have a teacher, Susan Mackay, who's had uh, some technicalities with her retirement. So we need to um, change the motion that we received earlier. Charlie does have the motion. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. I move to rescind the school board's prior acceptance of Susan Mackay's resignation at her request and to authorize the superintendent to place Susan Mackay on an unpaid leave of absence. Is there a second? Gail, any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a the retirement of Randy Ray. We have been notified, as you all have heard tonight, that Randy will, will be retiring effective June 30, 1997. I recommend that you accept it with regret. <laughs> Is there a motion? Charlie. I move with regret acceptance of um, Randall R. Ray's uh, retirement, or is it a resignation? It's a retirement. Retirement. Mm -hmm. Effective. Um, July 1st, 1997. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Charlie? Everybody offered their condolences <laughs> <laughs> and praise earlier. I've had two, two children out of my three that have had Randy as a teacher. And I have to echo Gail's um, comments about when Randy was a a civics teacher because it was civics that he taught in at the freshman year, which now will become senior requirement. And when I first came on the board, we always knew in the fall that we would see many young faces in our audience. And it was because it was a requirement of, of Randy's that they attend at least one town meeting, whether it was a town council or school board. And for some reason, they always seemed to choose the school board. Um, and I, and I miss that, and, and I think it's, it's a, a civic lesson that you can only learn firsthand. And I think watching it on television and, and, and reading it in the paper is not the same as, as experiencing something firsthand. So that is something that we do miss. Randy's been in our system 27 years, but his family's been in this town for many, many, many more. And... Um, He's, you know, the family themselves are, are a resource to this town. I mean, he has a nephew who is a teacher and a coach in our system. Um, his sister lives in my neighborhood. His sister-in-law is a, is a secretary to the town manager. So he will be missed because he is, as part of his family, have, have been a big participant in this community, and we thank you for that. Thank you, Randy. All those in favor? 7-0. Uh, the next item is the administrative nominations for 97. Yes, I wish to nominate the following administrators. Richard DeFusco, high school principal. Nancy Hutton, middle school principal. <coughs> Phil Dewitt, middle school assistant principal. Tom Eismaya, Pond Cove principal. Nancy St. John, Pond Cove assistant principal. Claire Labrie, special education director. Suzanne Weatherby, Director of Community Services, and Janet Hoskin, Assistant Director of Community Services. And you'll note there's no mention here of Athletic Director because we have not yet resolved what the con time configuration is going to be for that position for next year. Do you need a vote on this? Please. Is there a motion? <laughs> Priscilla. I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination of the administrative staff. 
Is there a second? I second. That was a worrisome <laughs> moment there. I, 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 All I, those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Seven zero. There's, there's a few red faces in the audience. <laughs> uh, the next item is the consideration of a sabbatical plan for approval. Yes, as you know, Susie Van Wee has requested sabbatical for next year, and Priscilla and I are the sabbatical committee, and we have met with Susie, and you have a written plan in your packet um, that Priscilla and I recommend. Susie is here, so if you have questions, you might want to direct them to her, or I don't know whether she wishes to say anything, unsolicited. <laughs> are there any questions? I, I just have a comment. Um, this was a real pleasure to read such a well thought out plan, and. Um, and I applaud you not only for looking to expand your, um, your incredible um, gifts as an artist, but um, for continuing to look for ways to deal with adolescents who some of us know firsthand now <laughs> how difficult it is to work with them. And thank you. Thank you for doing that. And uh, my only regret is that um, you won't be in the school for that trimester. But. I think this is a great opportunity for you. Then do we need a vote on that, Cynthia? Yes, please. Is there a motion, Gail? Yeah. I, move, I move we accept um, this proposal for sabbatical for trimester but for Susie Van Wee. Is there a second? Do I need to put the dates? Priscilla? Or? No. All those, any other discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> We're out of sync tonight. Seven zero. <laughs> And good uh, luck. Yeah. <laughs> Van Wy, thank you. <laughs> and the next item is the consideration of the superintendent's nominations for spring athletic positions. I have a rather lengthy list. Aaron Balistreri for indoor track, that's a middle school position. Scott Shea, varsity baseball. Doug Jones, JV baseball. Andy Strout, boys tennis. Susan Ray, girls tennis. Francisco Ruiz, assistant tennis. Doug Worthley, boys track. Mary Ann Doss, girls track. Larry Greer, assistant track. Charlie Birch, boys varsity lacrosse. And I've been practicing this next name. Kirk Jergelovich, assistant lacrosse. Ben Raymond, JV lacrosse. Jill Thomas, girls varsity lacrosse. And Charlie Carroll, girls JV lacrosse. And I guess again, you're on the hot seat, Andy, since you're the one that's here, if anyone has any questions or comments. There are still some vacancies, as you can see from your list, that hopefully we'll have by the next time. Are there any questions? Anne? I just have a comment to say thank you for such complete information <laughs> on all the people here. This is great. Yeah. I really appreciate seeing the ones still to be filled and know where we are and everything. Yes, so thank you for the information. Also, the, uh, you know, the girls' talk, we got this is the third time it's been in the newspaper, and we're hoping that. Sunday's ad will generate some interest, so just that's why we're late. Here we are. That season will be starting up soon, and we still have not had a candidate uh, to fill that position. Thank you. I know you are working hard to do that. Um, is there a motion? Charlie. I move acceptance of the superintendent's recommendation nominations for spring athletics. Is there a second? No second. Keith, any other discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. A good one. Six one. Mm. Are you against? Well, I just have some hesitation. Oh, sorry. Six one. All those opposed. One. Mm. Concerned. Um, the next item on the agenda is the consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing teacher negotiations. Is there a motion? So moved. Gail, second. So seconded. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you.